So tell me what stress means to you. D describe to me stress. This is good. So we're building our case here. We've got health is the natural order of things. Well-being is the natural order of things. Peace, inner peace, all the things you described is the natural order of things. Stress, when you have energy, turns you into a diamond, turns you into a butterfly. Stress, when we don't have resources, makes us very solid and dense, and we become more oriented towards the past, and then trying to live our future as an avoidance from the past. And we're forever retrying to create the past now. Can you, do you see how that could make you miserable? That is a total recipe. And another equation for you, equation for you, pain is inevitable. Tragedy is inevitable. Stuff happens in life. Stuff happens in life. But suffering is, is very much dependent on another variable. What do you think that is? I love pain equals, I'm sorry, suffering equals pain times I like that, that we could totally put that in. Resistance. And our perspective could totally be our form of resistance. So who else said something else? Someone attachment. else? Attachment. Attachment. Yeah, attachment is another form of resistance, right? So if, right? <laughs> if there's pain, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, that's sort of part of life, right? How do you think the diamond came to be? How do you think the butterfly came to be? I don't mean pain is an ouch. I mean pain is an experience of, oh my God, something's changing and it doesn't feel good. I think that's probably a good definition of pain is something that doesn't feel good. And when we resist that, that's what creates the suffering. And that resistance is born of an attachment to the past. And that past is related to being much more particle and way less wave. Because remember, how I look at anything determines that thing, anything. We good? And the more associated I am with resistance, what do you think our body does in resistance? Tell me. Tense. What else? Tense. What else? What does our body do when we resist? Aches. Aches, shrinks, contracts. That's it. When we let, when we let go, when we surrender, I'll tell you one of the most powerful things you can do for your health, that's to forgive. To forgive yourself, to forgive deeply. And I don't mean the Hallmark version of this, but I mean the, the deep where you no longer need to be right. And, and you don't need to be the victim anymore. That's powerful. That, that, that right there is when that wine glass says, I'm not going to break. I don't care what pressure you put me under. I, I will not break. That is the energy of that, that coal in the ground that says, you give me all you got, but I won't break. I know there's something inside of me. It births a diamond. This is Albert Einstein saying, I don't believe what they told me. This is Abraham Lincoln. How many times did he fail? He lost his wife. He goes through a clinical depression. Powerful stuff. So, particle, wave, past, resistance, pain, suffering equals pain. Suffering equals pain times resistance. In fact, I would even say that it, it, it exponen it's exponential. Suffering equals pain to the R power. It can just make everything crazy. So if you can remove this, we have a whole new game. So tell me, now that I just said that, what does stress mean to you? Give me some examples of stress for you. Overeating. Overeating, perfect. Absolutely. Worrying. Yes. Yes. Not enough time. Not enough time. Worrying, insomnia, we eat, we buy stuff. We try to get fixed everywhere. <laughs> what else? That's exactly what I was just thinking. It's fear. So what are we most afraid of? Bingo. Well, that's a good one, not being good enough. What else? Repeating what we're dragging That's right. And if we repeat, this is good. So if we repeat what we're dragging behind us, what could that mean? I don't mean to put you on the spot at, at all. 
That's right. It could mean a lot of things, and that we haven't resolved it, we haven't forgiven it. And, and maybe if we just crystallize that down a little bit, you did great, is that we're really afraid if we're carrying that stuff around. Most people, if you really boil it down, this is my opinion, and I'm not the first person to say this, that it really comes down to that I won't be enough, and I won't be loved. We're terrified that we won't be enough, and we won't be loved. So people become insane perfectionists, and then they try to be so good to everybody all the time, to people please, to posture, to position, to pretense. It's an interesting word, isn't it? Pretense. It's pretense. And the more pretense someone has, the more tension they carry. Isn't that interesting? But when pretense drops, what you discover is presence. Presence, pure presence, pure being. You know, when you meet someone and they just look you in the eyes and you just have that sense that they're really there. Or with yourself in those moments when you're in nature or you're at the beach and there's something transcendent that's so natural. That's presence. That's presence. And that's not to be found in the particle. It's to be found in the majesty of Utah exploring this amazing life and then the electron shows up right when you need it. It's quantum probability theory. And so, stress breaks the system down in a few different ways. How does stress break the system down, in, in your opinion, in your knowledge? Remember, you, you told the person next to you you were a genius. Brilliant. This is actually really good. It puts your energy in different places. All right, I'm going to write this one down. I'm going to energy in diff place. Amanda, you have to remind me if I forget what I wrote and what that means, you have to tell me. Okay, so your energy goes in different places. That's totally exhausting. I'm going to show you a drawing in a minute that's so helpful to see. E what else? When stress kicks in, what does it do to you? Shallow breathing. Perfect, shallow breathing. I love it. What else? Makes you solitary. Isn't, isn't that it? Dysfunctional. Yes. Yes, ma'am. We become dysfunctional. We're putting the dis in, we're putting the funk in dysfunctional. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, we go, yeah, and, and everything, right? I mean, it can be relationships and work, how we manage money, how we manage ourselves, how we treat our kids. Anybody else? Lee? Lee? <laughs> Just speak from experience. You got this. This won't be on your boards, by the way. <laughs> what it, yeah, so my question was, that's, that's, that's fine. What, it, what does stress do when it hits you? What does stress do? How, 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 how do you know that you're feeling stress? Anybody? Your body feels what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Thank you. The, see, everything happens for a reason. <laughs> You're just a plant to be a really good teacher. Has anybody heard of fight, flight, or freeze? All right. So we covered a little quantum physics. Our next endeavors are to look at a little bit of energy medicine. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about a little neurophysiology. So turn to the person next to you and say, I am a cosmic genius. <laughs>